10 minutes of public humiliation. That's what House Republicans endured during two back-to-back -back failures this week. First, when they couldn't round up the votes to impeach DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. And then, when they failed to pass a GOP-led package for $17.6 billion in aid to Israel. The double losses were a huge embarrassment for Speaker Mike Johnson, who's already been warned that some House Republicans could oust him. And the Mayorkas fiasco could be the last straw for some members of his party. According to The Messenger, one senior GOP aide said of Johnson, quote, if we lose the Israel vote after losing Mallorca's impeachment, vacate. Kurt Berdella and David Jolly are back with me now. Kurt, how much worse can it get for Speaker Johnson? I mean, <laughs> what does his future look like right now? Is that a trick question? I don't even think there's a right answer for that. Try. Um, every, every time that we think that it can't get worse for House Republicans and whoever is in that speaker's chair, uh, they show us that it can get worse, that it can get more embarrassing, more humiliating. Uh, I think that there is no scenario in which Speaker Johnson is still the Speaker of the House by the end of this year. It's no different than what Kevin McCarthy went through. It's no different than why Paul Ryan left. It's no different than why John Boehner left. Uh, this is an ungovernable conference. The Republicans right now, as they are currently constituted, who have no interest in governing, who have no interest in fulfilling the basic responsibilities of being a member of Congress, which is to effectively fund the government and to keep the government running, they don't want to do that. And so anyone who is in that position, who does anything that would resemble responsible governing, gets run out of town. Okay, but David, Johnson is, of course, unsurprisingly, trying to downplay all this criticism, right? And one of the things that he said is, I don't think that this is a reflection on the leader. It's a reflection on the body itself and the place where we've come in this country. So, David, is there any truth to that at all? Like, if, if we're actually trying, trying to see his side, is there any truth to that? I mean, is what we're seeing a reflection of the way that Trump has hijacked the party? And he sort of has his, his arms stuck. Yeah, it, it is a reflection of the level of partisanship with which the Republican majority majority has decided to behave, because they only have a one or two vote majority. And so maybe you don't get your super conservative priorities, but you do have a responsibility to govern, to keep the government open, to address crises both internationally and on our border. And because of the inability of Republicans to govern, this is a reflection of where we are. But Mike Johnson ran for speaker saying he would accept responsibility, so he doesn't get to pass it off to the rest of his caucus. The only thing that is saving Mike Johnson right now is nobody else wants his job. <laughs> because nobody, everybody knows that they couldn't do it either. And ironically, I, it got harder for Mike Johnson this week because Mitch McConnell capitulated to Donald Trump as well. And I know that sounds odd. It, it would seem like if Mike Johnson and Mitch McConnell both capitulated, then that works better. It really doesn't, because what Mike Johnson needs is for the Senate Republicans to shove legislation down his throat so he can say to House Republicans, I've got no choice. We mm. just don't have the numbers to push back against our own party in the Senate. Mitch McConnell caved this week, and that made governing that much harder. But the buck stops with Johnson and the buck stops with McConnell, and there's no passing it off to anybody else. Right. I think, Kurt, in many ways, um, Matt Gates right, took us to this moment, right? He very much led the Republican Party to oust Kevin McCarthy. But the interesting thing is that suddenly you have Gates having some form of virus remorse, right? Because right after the Mayorkas fiasco, Gates said, and I'm quoting him, he said, I also wonder, wouldn't it have been nice to still have Kevin McCarthy in the House of Representatives? <laughs> Honestly, that's something I, I never thought I would hear coming from him. Oh, brother. I mean, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Matt, I mean, when you follow Matt Gates, a person who at the very best is of questionable integrity, as we're seeing some of the other investigations that he is currently the subject of, uh, this is where you end up. Uh, you know, the Republicans are proverbially the, you know, the dog that caught up to the, you know, to the bus, and then they're shocked when the bus runs them over and over and over again. Uh, how many times are they going to have to repeat this history before they wake up and realize, you know, if you want to be in, quote, leadership, that actually means leading. It doesn't mean passing the buck off to your caucus. It doesn't mean blaming other people. It's take responsibility, step up, and act. Everybody always says they can do a better job than the current leader. But when they actually get into that position, mm -hmm. they do just as bad of a job as the person before. And so it makes you wonder, 
why did you throw out McCarthy in the first place if you were going to end up in exactly the same place as you were before that? And that's what we're doing right now, looking at these two government shutdown deadlines coming up here in the first week of March. Right. I think, David, you know, we can we can laugh all we want. Um, there's reason to do that. But the international community is looking at the United States and saying, what is happening? Right. I mean, I think this congressional dysfunction goes beyond domestic politics, as you know, and it can have very real national security implications. So what do you think is the collateral damage all of this can have in Ukraine, in the Middle East, in the eyes of the international community? What does that look like from that side? Yeah, the, the stakes and the consequences are very serious to have the failure of a governing coalition within the Republican majority. And ultimately, however we get there, it will be Democrats that provide the votes to govern and to, to pass hard legislation with some reservations of their own on the left when it comes to providing aid to Israel, supporting Ukraine. They have tried to solve the issue on the border. Look, it has always been for the past two years a governing coalition of Democrats who have actually governed, not Republicans. And so the question becomes the fate of Mike Johnson. I mean, if he wants to take the safe route to governing right now, he should tell his caucus, I'm not going to stand for speaker next Congress, and then just work for, with Democrats to actually pass the legislation he's ultimately going to have to pass. Mike Johnson may not want this job in the next Congress, but ultimately, Joe Biden and House Democrats and Senate Democrats are going to provide the votes to responsibly provide aid for the international community, as well as fund our own domestic priorities here at home. Republicans are just going to have to swallow the medicine on that.